After I released my Yuffie Video doorbell review last year, I heard from a lot of people that said they couldn't use it because they didn't have wiring available at their front door to power it. Well, Yuffie just released a battery powered version of their doorbell. How well does it work and do I recommend it? I'm Matt Farrell, welcome to Undecided. There's no shortage of video doorbells to choose from today. The market is full of options from Ring, Nest, August, and dozens of others. For a long time, I used the Ring Video Doorbell too, but last year I ended up switching to the Eufy Video Doorbell. And I'll include links in the description for both of my reviews that I published. With all of the options available, it really comes down to what features are important to you and the price. And when it comes to price, it's hard to beat the no subscription fee that comes with Eufy products. The reason I went with the Ring Video Doorbell 2 originally, and probably the most critical part of deciding which doorbell is right for you, it's power. It was the best option that was available at the time that didn't require existing doorbell wiring. Most video doorbells in the market require between 16 volts and 24 volts of power. But the Ring Video Doorbell 2 has an onboard battery that gives you between five and six months of power before you need to recharge it. And in the past, that was one of my recommendations for folks that didn't have existing wiring. That is until now. And I'd like to thank Yuffie for sending me the doorbell to check out. And just like with all my other reviews, whether I've paid for the products out of my own pocket or been sent a review unit like this one, there are no strings attached. My opinions are my own, no holds barred. A few basic specs worth calling out are that the doorbell is IP65 rated for outdoor weather and has operating temperatures between negative four degrees and 122 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 20 degrees and 50 degrees Celsius. When it comes to power, the Eufy Video Doorbell runs on a built-in, non-user replaceable battery, which Eufy says will last six months on a charge. And based on their other cameras, I think that's probably gonna be the case. But this will obviously vary depending on temperature, your doorbell settings, how often it's triggered, whether you watch live streams or not, that's all gonna wear down the battery quicker. Since it's a non-removable battery, that means having to pop the doorbell off the mount with the special security removal tool a couple of times a year. There's a micro USB port on the back of the unit that has a watertight cover. It takes about five or six hours to charge it up, so it's something you're most likely gonna do overnight. And the fact that you have to take the entire doorbell inside to charge it up is a little bit annoying. But if you do have existing wiring, you can wire it in and not have to worry about recharging every six months. And it can also operate an existing chime that's already wired into your home. However, if you have existing wiring with power, I'd recommend going with a doorbell without a battery, like the wired Eufy doorbell, for some reasons that I'll get to in a little bit. In many regards, this Eufy doorbell is very similar to the Ring Video Doorbell 2. Where I think the Ring has a slight edge is with a removable battery. You can buy a spare battery to have it charged and ready to go for swapping, but you still need to use a special security tool to open up the doorbell and swap it out. The big difference is that the doorbell is back in operation within a few minutes, versus several hours for the Eufy. In the end, I think it's only a minor annoyance with the Eufy recharging routine since you only have to do it a couple of times a year at most. This is a problem though that you're gonna have to put up with one way or another with any battery operated doorbell. In the case of the Eufy, there are other perks that far outweigh this minor negative. One thing that surprised me was that the Eufy doorbell comes with a home base too. It's very different from the wired version. The doorbell itself doesn't connect directly to Wi-Fi, which is actually a good thing for power conservation. The system is running on a proprietary low power wireless connection between the home base and the doorbell, which avoids Wi-Fi's much more frequent keep alive signal and helps to preserve power usage. That's how it's able to get six months of battery in a slimmer, more efficient package. The home base also acts as a door chime, but you can add additional chimes later if needed, as well as use Amazon Echo devices as additional chimes themselves. All of the videos are stored locally on the hub's internal 16 gigabytes of storage, which is plenty. Since the Homebase 2 works with other Eufy Cam products, you can actually add additional cameras to this package, which is pretty cool. In addition to the doorbell and home base, Eufy provides the mounting plate, screws, and an angled wall plate in case you need to adjust the camera's angle. In my case, I only attached the camera temporarily for testing, so please ignore the awkward setup. I used some 3M strips to put on my mailbox. I did it this way so I could have a nice side-by-side -side with my existing Eufy doorbell. And this is gonna sound very familiar to my other Eufy product reviews, but installation is well presented and easy to do. You attach the mounting plate to the wall, then you snap the doorbell into place on the mount. 
that's it. On my other doorbells, I've had special mounts 3D printed to fit over the vinyl siding, like what you see here with my wired Eufy doorbell. If you're placing a doorbell over siding like this, I'd recommend doing the same thing. I'll include a link in the description to the Etsy merchant that I've worked with in the past. He does a really good job customizing the mount for new models just like this one, so you'll have to talk to him about that, but it's affordable and it makes for a tidy installation. The app setup process was just as simple. You plug in the home base and set it up in the Eufy app. If you already have a home base too, like I do, you just jump straight to adding the doorbell. You'll want to plug in and charge the doorbell before setting it up since it's not going to be fully charged out of the box. After that, you just tap to add another device in the app and follow the instructions. And just like I've talked about before, their first time user experience is top notch, just like in the Eufy Cam E, the floodlight, and the wired doorbell. They've clear directions and each step has video tutorials to help you out. If you saw my previous review on the wired version of the Eufy Cam doorbell, some of what I'm about to say about the features and the performance is gonna sound very familiar. Most of the best selling video doorbells on the market have camera resolutions around 720p or 1080p. The top of the line Ring Doorbell Pro takes 1080p video and so does the Ring Video Doorbell 2. One minor downside of this type of resolution is the 16 by nine wide aspect ratio. It's using a lot of that resolution on a wider image instead of using it on more height. That's why some video doorbells have gone with four x three ratios like the August doorbell cam at 1280 by 960 or Nest doorbells very high resolution of 1600 by 1200. Well, both UP doorbells have a 2K 4x3 resolution at 2560 by 1920. To put all of that into context, the 1080p and Nest cameras have a little over two times more pixels than the 720p cameras. And the Eufy has a little over two times more than the 1080p cameras. At its highest settings, the Eufy video quality is fairly crisp and easy to make out faces from a good distance away. At the lower video quality setting, you tend to get some more macro blocking from the video compression, but it's still good enough to make out faces very clearly. The video does tend to get blown out in the brightest sections of the video, but that's because the camera is adjusting to the lower light levels closer to the camera in my specific situation. It's doing the right thing to ensure that the faces are properly exposed at the expense of the sky getting blown out. And the night vision mode works pretty much exactly as you'd expect. One interesting difference between the battery version and the wired version is that the battery version doesn't have HDR control. It has wide dynamic range instead, which is defaulted to on and you can't turn it off, but it looks really good. It also doesn't have distortion correction. When I asked Yuffie about that, they said it's because the battery version doesn't have the same horsepower to be able to do that kind of correction on device. You may have also noticed the stuttering and drop frames in the video samples I'm showing. I've been talking to Yuffie about that issue and they're currently looking into it, but it sounds like they may have a firmware fix in the works. When I get some additional information on that, I'll be sure to share updates in the description and a pinned comment. The Eufy also has a built-in microphone and speaker like pretty much every other video doorbell on the market. So you can hear and talk to people at your front door. And one feature I think is pretty handy is the quick response feature. When you're viewing a live feed, you just tap a little speech balloon icon, make your choice, and it plays the recording. There are a few other pre-recorded messages that say things like, Excuse me, can I help you? Or, Please leave it at the door. You can also record your own. Another nice feature is being able to save out screenshots in real time, as well as activating a recording. The motion detection is also surprisingly good for a battery operated camera. The wired version is always recording a three second buffer of video. So when a triggered event happens, it's able to include that buffer in the final recording. The result is having footage of somebody walking up to my front door from further down the stairs. My Ring Video Doorbell 2 was always hit or miss with triggering a recording, which is partially due to the type of motion detection, but also from the camera conserving power and only recording at the moment motion was detected. The battery operated Eufy is also lacking that three second buffer, but it's done an incredible job triggering recordings quickly. I don't get recordings of people walking all the way up to the front door, but I'm consistently getting them near the top of the walkway. My Ring usually had recordings of people walking away from the door, so we'd sometimes miss their face completely. That's not the case with Eufy. Not only is it responsive, but it also has face detection too, which cuts down on the false positive notifications. You can configure the sensitivity of the system to dial in how frequently it will record and notify you. And if you'd rather not use face detection at all, you can customize motion detection zones to narrow down the notification frequency. And one thing I really appreciate about the face detection is the actual notification that you get on your phone. If it's available, it will include a cropped thumbnail image of the person's face. 
and I've been really happy with how this has been working on the wired version. And so far, the battery video doorbell has doing a good job at it too. The notifications are timely, and I've been seeing motion notifications pop up right around the moment the person actually reaches the front door. A doorbell press also triggers a notification within a second or two on my phone. And the only minor delays I've noticed are when talking with the person using the push to talk feature. So it's very similar to the wired version for that. And probably my favorite part of UVU products is the encrypted local storage for all of your videos with no subscription fee. While the wired version stores videos on an internal four gigabytes of memory, the battery version stores videos on the 16 gigabytes of memory in the home base. And in my review of the wired version, a bunch of people questioned what would happen if somebody stole your doorbell. Well, with the battery version, there's nothing to worry about because the footage is locked away on the home base inside your house. Eufy does have an optional cloud service subscription for their Eufy security line of products, if that's something you're really looking for, but it's really not something that's needed. Having all of my footage stored locally, encrypted, and in my control with no subscription fee <laughs> is fantastic. Eufy's video doorbell is priced competitively with the Ring video doorbell 2 at $199. Given the slim package, no subscription fee, 2K video recording, and excellent performance, I think it's an extremely competitive product with Ring. But the one area that I've consistently dinged Eufy products is around integrations. The only integrations that are available right now are with Amazon and Google. If you link up your Eufy security account with something like Google Home, you can view live feeds on any Google smart device with a screen, like a Google Nest Hub. And while it works, it's very slow to respond. It's five seconds or more for the feed to get going, which at this point makes it useless in conjunction with responding to a doorbell ring. There's no IFTTT support or integrations into platforms like SmartThings, Hubitat, or Home Assistant, which greatly limits some of the benefits of Eufy compared to other systems that do. For instance, with Ring, I was able to trigger my front porch light if motion was detected at the front door after sunset. I also wish the doorbell could send RTSP video streams to a Synology disk station or other device to back up your video recordings in a secondary location. You can do this with the Eufy Cam E security cameras, but not their other products like the doorbell. And Apple HomeKit is only partially supported right now on a Eufy Cam 2, and not at all for the doorbell. Now I understand that some of these integrations might require hardware changes, but I hope they're able to roll out more of the software capable integrations over time for the doorbell. The Eufy Video Doorbell is highly competitive on price and features, but falls just a little bit short on integrations and the need to bring the entire doorbell in for recharging. If tying a video doorbell into services like IFTTT are a must for you, then I'd recommend looking elsewhere. But if you're looking for a high quality, battery operated video doorbell that remains local, has good picture quality and recording responsiveness, then Eufy should be at the top of your list. And jump into the comments and let me know what video doorbells you're using and how they're working out for you. I'm also curious how many of you are putting local data and privacy at the top of your feature list. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends because it really does help to support the channel. And be sure to check out my new podcast that I started with my brother. We discussed the previous week's video and some of your feedback. You can find out more at stilltbd.fm or just search for still to be determined on your podcast host of choice. Give it a listen and let me know what you think. And if you think I've earned it, I hope you'll consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell to get alerts when I post a new video. Without that bell, you might miss out. And give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and share it with your friends because it really does help support the channel. And as always, a big thank you to all of my patrons. I've got a lot of exciting videos in the works and your support is making it possible. Be sure to check out my Patreon page for additional details about joining the crew. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.